Panchatattva uh, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is uh, a very confidential guru topic. It's not revealed in Shastra. It's only in Gaudiya Sampradaya. But as uh, according to prediction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this will spread all over the world and become the main system of religion. So we are beginning to learn Panchatattva, the five truths. So we are going to cover these topics. Who are the Panchatattva? Then the Lord in five features. Then Gaur Nithai and the future Guru. First, who are Panchatattva? We may say that Panchatattva is Iskon. Iskon's creation or it's our idea. But as I mentioned before, that shlokas are everywhere. Now let's look at Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, chapter 5, text 32. We saw this two days ago. Krishna Varnam Tisha Krishnam Sambo Bhangasta Parashadam Yajnye Sankitana Praya Yajanti Hisume Yadasha. In the age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregation chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead who sings the names of Krishna. Krishna Varnam. This avatar will come, he will be chanting Krishna, Krishna. Second point. Tvisha Akrishnam. Tvisha means his skin color, the skin, the complexion. Akrishnam. Krishna means dark. But Krishna will come, but his color will not be dark. He came as Gauranga. Tvisha Akrishnam. Sanga Upanga Astra Parashadam. He is accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. So, this is an important point. In no other incarnation is it mentioned, Supreme will come with someone else. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 3, there is a list of 24 incarnations of the Supreme Lord who will descend. It's mentioned about Ram, Matsya Purna, Varaha, Varsimha, Dattatraya, Ashura, so many. But none of them it says they will come, come with someone else or they will fit in a group. So this is directly mentioning Panchatattva. Panchatattva is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is Amar Puran, the topmost Puran, the topmost of the Vedas. Yaswan Bhava, Akira Shruti Sara Vekam, Adhyatma Dita, Apititi Shatam Tamo Andha, Samsari Nam Karunraya Purana Bhuyan, Tam Vyasa Sumunu Upayami Guru Nina. Sutta Goswami is glorifying. Shukadeva Goswami by chanting this shloka and he said I offer my respect to the son of Vyasa Vyasa Sunu, Shukadeva Goswami who compiled the green essence of the Vedas Yaswan Bhava Akila Shruti Saram Ekam Akila Shruti Saram he compiled the green of the Vedas so we don't have to go to the Vedas Yaswan Bhava Ekam Ati Samsariram Karunaya Purana Duhyam. For those who are in the worldly existence and unable to come out, this very special Purana can liberate them. So, therefore, Bhagavatam is an important Shastra. And here it's saying, revealing identity of Panchatattva in Bhagavatam. So, let's look at the Panchatattva. There are many different pictures. This is one of them. On the altar you can see, in every Iskon temple, Panchatattva is there. There also. So the Pancha means five. Tattva means truth. Or, or it can also mean in Sanskrit, uh, Tattva. Um, essence. Substance. Essence. Of the, but here it's meaning eternal personality. Eternal personality. Just like we have Jiva Atma, uh, Jiva Tattva, Vishnu Tattva, in different categories of living entities. That's what we look at now. So Tattva can also mean eternal, uh, uh, eternal living entities who are pious. So now these are the five personalities. Pancha Tattva, we refer to them. This is the pranam, uh, Panchatattva, Panchatattva Mahamantra. 
the Panchatattva who you are referring to, they are uh, this pranamantra, uh, sorry, mahamantra of the Panchatattva is invoking their mercy. Anytime we chant this mantra, we are invoking the mercy of the Panchatattva. They can give us their mercy. So therefore, before chanting, we will say it. In Kirtan, we have to chant it three times before, and before Japa, we will, we will chant it. Some can chant before every round, some don't, but at least then you chant at the beginning of the day before all the rounds. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita, Gadadha, Shri Vasana, Gaurabhakta. How many personalities is this? Five. Really? Don't look at This is Shri Krishna Chaitanya? One. Second, Prabhu Nityananda? Two. Three? Four, five, and what is this? Gaur Bhakti. What about this? Gaur Bhakti is everyone. Yes. Five, seven, this is glorifying Panchatattva, this mantra, and all the devotees of Gora. Yes. Srivas, Adi, etc. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda, all of you are on the altar. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, we are glorifying Mahaprabhu and his devotees. There is actually one bhajan. It's called Vaishnava Vandana. It's written by Devan And uh, there he is saying, I offer my respects to Gora. I offer my respects to Gora's devotees in Neelachal. Vrinda, Vandavasi, Jata, Vaishnava, Dhana. I offer my obeisance to Gora's devotees in Vrindavan. Gora's devotees in Navadi, in Puri. Then he says, in all the countries, I offer my obeisance to Gora's devotees. And then he says that by glorifying them, I have accessed their mercy. And he says, Ramanda Tarite Shakti Korte Jane Jane. This is actually Bengali. All of each one of them have the power to liberate the universe. Panchatattva came to liberate this world. But Prabhupada writes in a book of Chaitanya Charitamrita, if someone takes shelter of Panchatattva, they can liberate them more than Panchatattva. They can become more. How is it possible? It's the same Panchatattva mercy coming through the devotees. Then Prabhupada gave an example that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he delivered and did so much preaching. But Nityananda did more. And Haridas Thakur did more. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Puri, he sent Nityananda back to Bengal. He said that we cannot all be Puri, someone has to preach. So then he sent him. And then Nityananda did a lot of preaching. But after Nityananda came, three personalities who did big preaching. Shiva Thakur, Narottam, Shyamani. They trained under Divos one. They preached more than Nityananda. And then if you go further down, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he preached, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he preached, he established 64 months all over India, and out of India, one in London, one in Burma. So that is big preaching, but more than him was Srila Prabhupada. Our Srila Prabhupada established 108 centers. That's bigger preaching, but bigger than that is after Prabhupada, now the 800 centers. People are chanting Hare Krishna in Argentina, Russia, Darisha, everywhere, all over the world. So, the mercy of Panchatattva is so great that it will surpass even Mahaprabhu. But that is not a contradiction. It's the same mercy of Mahaprabhu. But except that, the devotees give it up more carelessly. They are not thinking of this quality, which is good. Absolutely. So that is the mercy which we cannot uh, comprehend, we cannot understand. As we stay in the moment, chant at one, then we'll understand what a great fortune, where we came, what is this. So this is the Panchatattva Mahamantra glorifying the Panchatattva and the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these are some of the writings about Panchatattva in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada writes, no, this is not good. This is Krishnadas Prakash Goswami who wrote 
Chaitanya Charitamrita, the most authoritative scripture on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, spiritually, there is no difference between the five tapas. For on the transcendental platform, everything is absolute. Yet there are also varieties in the spiritual world. In order to taste these spiritual varieties, one should distinguish between them. Okay, so. So, actually, now, these are five personalities. We're going to explain who they are. I mean, what is their nature? But of course, everyone can, can say, especially new devotees, who is this personality? Who is this personality? Who is this personality? Ambedkar Acharya. This is? Vedadhas Pandit. And? Srivastava. Okay, so you have idea. So now, the supreme energetic, the personality of Godhead, manifesting in order to enjoy five kinds of pastimes, appears as members of Panchatattva. Why does he come as Panchatattva? Actually, there is no difference between them because they are situated on the absolute platform. But they manifest different spiritual varieties as a challenge to impersonalists to taste different kinds of spiritual beauty, beauty's presence. We are on the topic of why Pancha Tattva came as five. Tattva, Param uh, Satyam, Param Satyam, the Supreme Truth, why did he come in five? So, answer is given here. One is that the Supreme Lord, he wanted to taste and enjoy different ways, because Nityananda is also Krishna. But there he's serving, he's not in a, enjoying, he's serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Advaita Acharya, he's also Krishna expanded as Shri Daksha Vishnu, incarnated as Advaita Acharya. They, they are different avatars. They are different tattvas. Gadadhar Pandit is, in, is uh, Radharani incarnated, Shakti tattva. So, more, I'll go more into that just now. But the point is that the Supreme expanded in different forms to enjoy in a different way. That is why Panchatattva came. Another reason why Panchatattva came in five features, the Supreme, is because in Kali Yuga, impersonals increase the Mayabhadas. People who criticize Supreme Law does not have a form. He is simply, uh, his energy, he's a light, he's something, something they cannot say what he is. They can say what he's not, he's not, no eyes, no legs, no, no. They have legs, they have eyes. A God, no, God does not have them. Someone has a consort, no. How can God have a wife? He, he has. God has everything we have and more. So to challenge them, he came not as one person, as five persons. To bewilder them. Now they are shocked. But before you were saying God is a person, now you are five persons. So to bewilder them, to shock them. That was one reason. Other reason is to enjoy in different ways as a Supreme God, as the servant of God, Nityananda. In Panchatattva, uh, okay, we'll say in the next one. Okay, who are the Panchatattva? We have just explained. Five different kinds of expansions of the Supreme Lord. Now we look at those expansions. We just spoke about Panchatattva Mahamantra. That is Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Kavanita Nanda, Shri Avita Radha, Shri This is Panchatattva Pranamantra. What is a Pranamantra? When we go to pay obeisance in front of the deity, we chant this mantra. So in front of Panchatattva, we chant this mantra. When we bow down. Panchatattva Atmakam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Avatar, Bhakta Khyam, Namami, Bhakti Shakti Kam. So it is a pranamantra to each of the categories of panchatattva. Now let's break up this and see what is it saying. This is the panchatattva. This pranamantra is speaking of five different tattvas. Tattva. These are the five tattvas. Bhakta Rup, Bhakta Swarup, Bhakta Avatar, Bhakta and Bhakta Shakti. Bhakta Rup, the Supreme Lord came in the form of a devotee. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
Supreme Lord also came as expansion of the devotee. Whose expansion? That is known as Svarup. Svarup. Svarup means his, his own expansion. Another form of God. That is Vityananda. He also came as Bhakta Avatar. That is Advaita Acharya. He is an Avatar. He is incarnation of Shri Mahavishnu. Then Bhakta. Bhakta is Srivast Thakur. And Bhakti Shakti is Gadadhar Pandit. Now there is a deeper meaning to this. I, I just said we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Bhakta Ru, Nityananda, Sri Vedu, Srivas, and Gadadhar Pandit. Okay, so now there is a deeper meaning to this. Sorry, I don't know how much deep to go. Because for some of you it's new. And actually this is highly specialized for Gaudiya. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'll go deeper. But actually, we take shot of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so we can approach Krishna. But one strange thing is, it's our previous Acharya said that Chaitanya Avatar is more difficult to understand than Krishna's. That is some kind of bewilderment. So now I, I'm going to explain some other point here. These five personalities are not only forms of the Supreme, but they are representing different tattvas. Now I'll explain which tattva. For example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's Krishna, he's only one. Ekhanishwara Krishna. Bhakta Swaru means expansion of Krishna. Now, example of expansion of Krishna is Balaram. Okay, Balaram. And then we have also Chaturvyuha. Pradyumna, Aniruddha, Vasudev, Shankarshan. They are the incarnated as in Ram Lila, as Ram, Bharat, Shatukna, and Lakshman. So these are known as Swaru, they expand from Krishna. Because we say Krishna avatar, but there are many, many types of avatars. This is given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's a very deep science. How Krishna's one incarnation looks like him, another doesn't look like him, another looks like him, but the color is different. Another completely doesn't look like him at all, like Vansya Purna Varana. Then example, Rama Avatar looks like Krishna, but the color is different. So they know there are so many names for him. That is given in Chitanya Chitanya. I won't go into that. But Bhakta Rup is Supreme Lord. This Panchatata is representing all of them. Swarup is representing, Nityananda is representing all the Swarup, like yeah, expansion. And Bhakta Avatar is representing all the avatars in the Purusha, Purusha category. Vishnu, then Matsya, Purma, Rama, that is category. Bhakti Shakti. Shakti of Krishna. Who is Krishna Shakti? Rama. Who is uh, Ram Shakti? Sita. Vishnu Shakti? Yeah. So, this is the Shakti category. In the Shakti category, now this is Radharani, but it's also representing Swarup Dhamdha. Swarup Dhamdha's incarnation of Lalita. Then Ramananda Rai, incarnation of Vishaka and Arjun, they are different. So, when we speak about Panchatattva, the five truths is representing all the different kinds of expansions of the Supreme. Supreme is Vishnu Tattva. He is represented. Then you have uh, Shakti Tattva, Jiva Tattva, Swarupa Tattva. Vishnu Tattva, Jiva Tattva, Swarupa Tattva, and uh, Shakti Tattva, and this is what I call it. Uh, but all the tattvas are represented. So Panchatattva is not only five, it's representing all the categories. When we speak Panchatattva. In other words, we are worshipping Supreme Personality of Godhead and all his tattvas at once by chanting this mantra. Again, like yesterday, just interrupt me and I'll explain or elaborate. It's difficult to see in one hour meeting. But uh, Panchatattva is representing all the forms of God. And why did Krishna come in these five ways? To enjoy in a different way. 
Why does he come as Ram? He wants to enjoy as a ruler with one wife as a king. And then why does he come as Krishna? To enjoy as his, himself. Why does he come as Purna Avatar? To enjoy the Samudra Mantan. To enjoy in different ways, Krishna takes different avatars. So Pancha Tattva, in Chaitanya Lila, Krishna expanded to enjoy as a servant, as a Shakti, and as Supreme Lord. Yes. No, Shakti is all the Shaktis. In Chaitanya Lila, there are many Shaktis. He's not, but he's associated. He's not, he's not in that category of Ramananda Rai has three jivas. If you read Gora Ganadesha Deepika, he's uh, simultaneously Vishaka and Arjun and one more personality. In Chaitanya Leela, there are some multiple. Haridas Thakur had three personalities. Brahma and one Muni who was cursed because he offered Tulasi without washing. So he was cursed to become a Yavana. Yavana means Muslim. So Haridas Thakur was that and Brahma and one more. Pralat Maharaj. So, uh, so Ramananda Rai, one of his Incarnation was Vishal in, in inside. So that is representing all of them. Even Jagadananda Pandit in Chaitanya Lila is Satya Mahama. Is Satya Mahama incarnation. And like that, they, all the tattvas incarnated from Krishna Lila into, into uh, Chaitanya Lila and the Panchatattva representing all of them. It's not just that person we are representing them. Srivas Pandit is representing us, Jiva Tattva. So now, Panchatattva took birth in different places. Why is that? It's mentioned that uh, in Chaitanya Bhagavat that uh, some took birth in high and low families. One reason was, it's mentioned that they had to purify those families and those lands. Then they came. But wherever they took birth, because some took birth in different parts of Bengal, some in just the border of Bengal, Charakam, Orissa, but they all gathered in Navadvi. They all gathered and performed the pastime of Sankirtan. Sankirtan is the chanting. And they would perform Sankirtan in the house of Shiva's Pandit's house. Shiva's Thakur. How many people have seen Shiva's Thakur's house in Mayapur? Yeah. In Mayapur is the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed Kirtan all night. In Krishna Leela, what is the topmost Leela? Hmm? Yeah. In, within Krishna Leela, there is uh, so many different pastimes. Which pastime Leela is considered the highest? Ras right. Leela. Yeah. That took place at night. Yeah. So Krishna had Ashtaprahar Leela. Every three hours, the Leela changes. Eight times, he changes the Leela. And at night is the Ras Leela. That is the topmost. In Chaitanya Leela, what is the topmost? Sankita. Okay. When did that happen? Yeah. At night. At Shiva's Thakur's house. Shiva's Thakur's house is no different from the Rasa's Thali in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. It is no different. It's the same. Mm -hmm. All night they do Kirtan. All night in Chaitanya Leela they did. And the same personalities were there. Same. They were doing Ras Leela, now the Shaktis are there, but they are doing Sankirtan. The Leela is different. So, therefore many songs, so many uh, writings are emphasizing again and again. Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya, Radha Krishna, Nai Hanya. The, the Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is same as Krishna. Gorangera Sangi Gane, Nitya Sita Kohimane, Sejai Vrajinda, Sutta Pas. One who accepts the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates as eternally liberated, he goes to Vrindavan in the next birth. So, the Rasa's Thali, the highest Leela in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, is in the nocturnal kirtans in Shiva's Pandit's house. And this is again proof. From uh, that bhajan, Golo, Kera, Premadana, Hari Nam, Sankirtan. 
that that highest lila of Ras lila has now come as chanting of the holy name. So who sits and chants Hare Krishna in front of Radha Krishna, in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is doing the highest activity that the jiva can do in this creation. Srila Prabhupada said in uh, this, there's a song called Gorangera Duti Pada, there's a particular bhajan. Prabhupada wrote the commentary for that and said that this Sankita movement is supposed to take us to the Ras Lila. The topmost pastime of Krishna is Ras Lila. If we follow this Sankita movement, that's where we land up. That same Ras Lila now came as chanting of Holy Lord. So one who sits and chants, he is doing the highest thing. So they were performing this. But the Panchatattva, they were not only performing, but they were also propagating and preaching. In the daytime, they preach. At night, they will be chanting all night. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's written, Chaitanya Leela did not end. When did Krishna Leela, uh, I don't say end, I say become unmanifested. Some 5,000 years ago, Krishna Leela became unmanifested. When that Mosha Leela happened, all the Pandavas and the Anandana, uh, the other day just kill, killed each other supposedly. That was a Leela then. All the Devatas had to go back, that's all. Krishna and they cannot die actually. Krishna also cannot die. That Leela where that arrow was shot in his leg. If you want to understand it properly, read Srimad Bhagavatam 12 candle. No, 11 candle. There it's explained that the one hunter shot in the leg. And then people say, oh, Krishna died also because he killed so many people. So even he had to die, he had to suffer karma. So in answer to that, first of all, no one can die from an arrow in the leg. You may lose a leg, lose some blood. You cannot die from it. Another thing is we see Krishna's birth, how it was. Then we understand he didn't even take birth no more. He appeared in Vasudev's mind. <coughs> from there he went to Devaki's mind. Then he manifested there. He didn't take birth from no more. So that was just a leela because People came to this material world to escape Krishna. They want to be nasty, they want to be atheist. So Krishna didn't disturb them. He gave them a, a rule that he want to remain nasty, you can be this. He left the body, he himself went on. So that's when Krishna Lila, you can say, ended in this planet. But when did Chaitanya Lila end? According to Chaitanya Charitamrita, it did not end. It's continuing now. In seventh chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, they're describing the tree of devotional service. Then it's expanding that the tree started with Mahaprabhu and his Nityananda, Veta, his disciples, and they had disciples. This way the tree branched out, and it said the tree is continuing to branch. Therefore, Mahaprabhu, this Lila did not end. And whoever takes part in the Sangita movement, they're in the Lila. So this is a unique opportunity to enter the past times of the Lord. How? Prabhupada explained. Sankita. Sankita can mean two things. One is chanting. There's another meaning. Who knows? Commonly we use it in the West and in this one. Sankita means book distribution. Yeah. Prabhupada said, Mahaprabhu did Kirtan, people heard it. And now Prabhupada's books were distributed far and wide. He said this is the Buddha Kirtan. Pradanga. This Pradanga you will hear here, just nearby. But the books, will, uh, the vision and the message goes very far. So the Sankita movement has now transformed into this book distribution, which is the prime activity of this book. So, so the Leela of Chitra Mahaprabhu is continuing. And all those who are taking part in preaching, they are in that leaf. So now, some descriptions of the Panchatattva's past tense. They come in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. I just directly put the verses. 
In distributing love of Godhead, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates did not consider who was a fit candidate who was not, nor where such distribution should or should not take place. They made no condition. Wherever they got opportunity, members of Panchatabha distributed love of Godhead. We can't fully comprehend this message. We, when we go preaching, we we'll go where people easily will take the message so we can get a result. Generally, it's like that. Even in India, we check which area to distribute books, where more books to go. But Panchatatra went to the area where you know, like, uh, we would not go. They went to the area where people were most suffering and most needy. So they did not check Adhikar, who is qualified. This is the mission of Panchatatra. Before it was not like that. Any avatar, it was not in this uh, same way. We will see. Krishna says, Sarvan Dharman Paritaja Mahami Kishore. Amatam Sarvan Kapuja Moksha Ishan Mahasha. Krishna says, I will destroy your sin. Um, take shelter of me. All your sins will be destroyed. I will deliver you Moksha Ishami. But what the first line? Well, first, we have to surrender. That's a big job. We are going to surrender. How many people came today? <laughs> surrender. Right. No problem. So it's not easy. Surrender, and either surrender will be oh, I'm not going to follow this you know, They're telling me to give up so many. <laughs> They'll not do it. So this is no money. This is dharma. You have to give up this and follow that. But in Chaitanya, uh, this Sankirtan woman did not like that. In surrender, he said, okay, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, I'm giving you, take it. Just if you join the kirtan, purification starts. We can't understand. But just sit in kirtan, we get pure, purified. Just take the prashad of uh, offered to Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the altar. Just uh, hear katha of Panchatattva. Just go to another deal. Purification will start. You don't have to surrender. This is the unique point about Panchatattva. He didn't ask us to surrender. He said, you come, and actually, he didn't even call, he ran after them. They didn't want to be liberated. They ran, they caught them by force to liberate. This is the leader. They couldn't understand. So this is the Panchatakwa. Uh, they didn't see who is qualified or who surrendered to them. They just gave it. Although members of Panchatakwa plundered the storehouse of double God and ate and distributed its contents, there was no scarcity for this wonderful storehouse is so complete that as the love is distributed, the supply increases. So now here, Krishna Prem or Bhakti is compared to a store. Just imagine, there is a famine, a drought, and food is being distributed. <coughs> so they lock the food properly and give it one by one. But it's not being given free, you have to pay. The only person having the food, the queue is there. So this is an analogy is used many times in the bhajans, in the, that uh, they plunder the storehouse. That means where the person is taking the payment and giving the goods, they open behind, broke open the door and told everyone, take it free, take it, take it, take it, don't worry. This is the analogy. It comes in many versions that they did not see uh, who is qualified and whether, you know, it says here there was no scarcity. This is such a commodity, the more you give, the more you get, it says here. As love is distributed, supply increases. This means, if any one of you starts to preach and bring other people to this movement, you will double your bhakti. And you preach, bring someone else, you will double your bhakti. Normally, if something is given, it goes. But in this case, it becomes more. So if you give bhakti, if you give, if you distribute Prabhupada's books, if you spread the mercy, we will increase. We will increase more. This is some particular uh, feature we have to understand about the Sankhita movement. Because previously in Vedic Dharma, what was system of religion, everything, this is totally something different. We have to understand. Because Kaliuga has changed all the movements. Kaliuga has come and we cannot, it's very hard if we're going to practice previous system. 
So this system has come for us. The flood of God had swelled in all directions. Thus young men, old men, women, children were immersed in that inundation. So Panchatattva used to preach. They went house to house. They spread the movement. And everyone got, uh, it's like you break a dam. Everyone is flooded and drowned. So they, they are saying that. It swelled in all directions. Young men, old men, women and children all got immersed. Immersed means they all drowned in the ocean of love of God. Now, this is extract from the commentary by Srila Prabhupada. The Krishna conscious movement will inundate the entire world and drown everyone. Where the one be a gentleman, raw, even lay in valley of life. This is the prediction. When the five members of Panchatattva saw the entire world drowned in love of God and the seed of material enjoyment in the living entity is completely destroyed, they were exceedingly happy. Now I don't ask a question. He had seen Panchatattva saw the entire world drown in love of God. Did that happen? Panchatattva came, but even China they did not manage that, it was But here they took him about whole world. So what is the explanation of this? Acharya is explained. Who can say? Are they, are they talking about the future? Yeah, I mentioned it yesterday. This is Prabhupada saying, because this is what will happen. And Panchatattva are watching, this is future things. They are watching. They are still there. They will go. But they said, if we here, we will preach, then no one will preach. So they came out. They, there is one conversation of Srila Prabhupada. Because in this song I mentioned, Vaishna Bandana, there it is mentioned, Brahmanda Tarite Shakti, Porte Jane Jane. Each one of Mahaprabhu's devotees has the power to liberate the universe. Not the, not the planet, not the country, the universe. All the Bandha Jeev, all the Christian souls can be liberated. So someone asked Srila Prabhupada, why didn't they do it? Bhaktra Thakur came, he could have done it. After Mahaprabhu, so many people come, they didn't do it. Why not? Mahaprabhu could have done it, he didn't. Okay. It's another, others. Why didn't they do it? So Srila Prabhupada said, Bhaktra Thakur didn't do it because he left mercy for me. Then Prabhupada smiled, he said, and I'm going to leave mercy for you. I won't do it. Everyone has to engage in this moment. And how we'll get liberated is by preaching. This is purification. It has to finally because one another Maharaj is from uh, Lokanath Maharaj. He, he started this Padayatra. So someone asked him about this Padayatra ideas I never heard before, you know, how is this? Actually it's Prabhupada's idea, he wrote it. So then he said, in Kaliuga people don't go to temple, temple has to go to temple. The kirtan goes on the street. The book distribution goes on the street. Prashadam, everything will go on the road because no one can come. Sometimes you see YouTube videos, they're criticizing, it's called the Why are you distributing Gita? You grow me on the road. You know this? Yes, yes. I think it happened in Mohan very spoken about this. Many, but I've seen it many times. That uh, they criticize it, but the point is that they're not coming to the temple. So actually, the Panchatattva for devotees of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we belong on the street. We are field devotees, field workers, not office workers. On the field, we are meant to go in. Mm -hmm. So, everyone was qualified to do it, but they left the mercy for the future devotees. For Darasana was left for you. <laughs> so, here, when Panchatattva saw that the seed of material enjoyment in living entities destroyed, they became very happy. Actually, enjoyment is there, but not material. Enjoyment is there in spiritual Actually, much more than material. Otherwise, what is the proof that the uh, ones who are here, they are not going there? Devotees of Islam, I have spoken to you. Don't forget, I am a local Saudi. But people are here who are householders. I have spoken to them. They don't go to movies, restaurants, and all these things. Maybe go to the So, why is it? Why are they 
pigs happily doing that is because they're happy, they're getting some taste. They don't need to go there, other place. But those people, they're not, uh, they're not able to, they're like, they'll go for the next movie, next movie, they'll keep coming. They're not satisfied. But the devotees of call householders, everyone, they're happy. So, Mahaprabhu said here, seeing that the material enjoyment is destroyed and uh, everyone is, uh, he became very happy, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Still, devotees enjoy so much because they are in the spiritual energy. The real enjoyment is in the spiritual energy. The spiritual energy, Haladini uh, Shakti is there. The, what gives us spiritual happiness, that is in the in Bhakti. We don't have to go outside for it. Now, one question. The Panchatata preached widely. We read about it. We heard they did. They were very successful. Everything happened. But Mahaprabhu took sannyas. When he took sannyas, he left another thing. He left the whole Lila Panchatatva, went to Jagannath Puri, different kind of Lila stuff. Why? Yeah, he wanted to spread, but actually in Panchatattva, he could have spread, he could have spread why? But there was one defect, one thing, point, why it's mentioned in Shaitanya Charitamrita. So it's mentioned here. This is actually from the Shloka of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Number one, the impersonalist, fruity workers, false traditions, blasphemers, non devotees, lowest among the student community are very expert in, in avoiding the Krishna consciousness movement. Therefore, the inundation of Krishna consciousness cannot touch them. Okay, before I go on, I'll explain. There is one bhajan, Nitai Gunamani. They said, Do we know Bhakta Jana? Dina Hina Bhasi, that when the time he broke the dam of love of God, it flooded everywhere and everyone drowned in the love of God. But these people, they floated, they didn't drown. That's a problem. They're always not drowning, they're floating. They're not coming in love of God. So, seeing that the Mayavadis and others were fleeing, Lord Chaitanya thought, I wanted everyone to be immersed in an inundation, inundation of love of God. But some of them have escaped. Therefore, I shall devise a trick to drown them also. Okay, before we go on, you have to understand what is this. Impersonalists is like uh, Brahmavadi, Mayavadis. There are people, when we talk about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna, they say God has no form. Like example, Brahma Once in Bangalore, I was invited, it was Bhagavad Gita appearance day. Last, before last. So Brahma Kumari is told me to give a class in there. I thought, very different philosophy. So I came and said, they gave their lecture first. And then I heard. Actually, their plan was some of them. They were saying that anyone who has a form is material. So God cannot have a form. They went on speaking, speaking. That anything has a form, it's limited to one place and one time. So how can God have a form? So, okay, after that, then I spoke. I said, God has a spiritual form. Unlimited by time and space. No limit. Krishna is here, he can also be there and there. And the body is spiritual. It's not very birth, death, disease, or death. Not limited by time and space. So, in personalists, we cannot preach to, we cannot speak anything. They just say God has no form, that's it. So, they, that was one problem. Fruity workers, these are called karmis. Fruity workers, their aim is, I'll work hard, I'll get money and I'll enjoy, it. that's all. I'll do some pious activity, so I get more money, that's all. And a good birth next time. They call karmis. False logicians. These are gyanis. They will sit and discuss deep philosophy, but their philosophy is how to escape surrender to Krishna. Yeah. Blasphemous, nasty, non-devotees. Lowest among students, 
export in the world. So to capture them, thus the Lord accepted sannyas or of life after full consideration. The plan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, I came as Panchatattva, I came as a Pandit, the Mahi Pandit, but these people were waiting. But as a sannyasi, the Vedic culture is, you see a sannyasi, they bow down and listen to him. That was the one. Then he could speak to them. And this picture, if anyone had, how many people had Chaitanya Chaitanya Okay, I hope next year it's there. <laughs> Very good. So, this is showing <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to Varanasi. Varanasi is the head of the impersonalist community. So he went there and he converted all the sannyasis. So how did he do it? He went like this, then he debated with them. So the trick why he took sannyas is so he could put this knowledge even into these other people who are trying to escape sannyas. This is why he took sannyas. So actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was visible for 48 years, totally. Out of this, 24 years he was in Rasashram in Nalani. He performed Sankirtan. After 24 years, he took sannyas and lived in Jagannathpuri. But out of that 24, six years he toured South India, Bengal and Vrindavan. This is a diagram. He went like this. He went to Pandarpur, he gave Diksha to Sukaram. He came like that. In, I met someone in Tamil Nadu, he was a devotee. He's called initiate. So I asked him, so how did you come in the movement? They said I was chanting Hare Krishna. Who told you? No, they were just chanting in my village. I said they were, there was a temple. No, no temple. Then how did you enter the Someone came. Oh, you read a book. He said, no, nothing. I grew up from birth at this Mahantra. We used to chant in our village. In the middle of Tamil Nadu in one village. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because that is right on the way to Sri and came to Shira. And like this, the Mahamantra is in some places. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come. So after that six year trip for remaining 18 years, he stayed in Jagannath Puri and chanted the Hare Krishna Mantra. Actually, when Mahaprabhu, anyone is practicing bhakti, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we may wonder what did he do? He went to chant there, here, here. What is the, but actually, they spread the mercy very far. Even one person is chanting in one corner of this city. A subtle effect is felt in that house, in the surrounding. Even if you just imagine that mosquitoes and ants, they are hearing. Yeah. Next birth is you. He, as Prabhupada said, you take a leaf flower, root fruit, a vegetable, offer it to Krishna, that plant next birth is human. It gets a big sukriti. So a devotee just being in a community is very auspicious. What is because he gets perfection and he liberates all generations behind him. It's mentioned in uh, <coughs> in seventh canto of Shiva Bhagavatam. There Pallad Maharaj after his father was killed by uh, Rishinadev, Rishinadev asked him to ask some <coughs> benediction. He said that I don't have any benediction. But we a guy in a chitta. I am my chitta. My consciousness is immersed in your past times. I am not suffering. I, I never felt any suffering. Then he said, Shotaka Toga Mukha I am just worried about my father. He was so sinful. Please deliver him. So then uh, Narasimha Dev said, don't worry about your father, him and certain number he gives. 17 generations, I don't know, number of generations. Seven generations and your father are all liberated because you are liberated. So shortcut to liberation, make your child a pure devotee. That is one way. So, what was the point? <coughs> no, anyway, I was saying, if Sachitanya so Mahaprabhu was chanting in Jagannath Puri, that auspiciousness was felt all over the world. 
and he's touring India, means all of these future songs, now they hear this song, oh, go get they came. Bhakti never leaves the heart. Even you, a little association with the devotee, with someone, it says, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva, uh, sorry, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Kaya, Lava Mata, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Kaya. All the Shastras say, Lava, Lava L, that is uh, one over twelfth of a second, not one second. One twelfth of second association with the devotee is enough to attain perfection. It's very powerful. So, anywhere Mahaprabhu came, his Leela happened, he planted the seed for the Sadhguru. But many got delivered also. So now we spoke about Panchatattva. Now we speak about Gauranita. Gauranita is a combined form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda. They are always together. They were together as Ram and Lakshman. They were together as Krishna and Balaram. And they were together as Vishnu and Krishna. So they came in Chaitanya Lila as Gauranithai. So Gauranithai is a special combination. Panchatattva we take Shantra. But Gauranithai is also known as Guru Gauranga. Because Gauranga is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How will we approach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Through Nityananda. If we go to Krishna Leela, how we approach Krishna? If you read uh, Bhagavatam, when Krishna appeared, before Krishna appeared, who appeared? Varan. When Varan appeared, it's written there, Prabhupada said. And it's also in the Sanskrit. That before attaining Krishna, we have to attain the spiritual strength. Spiritual strength has to come before we attain the Supreme Vistana Kaurti. So that spiritual strength is given by Bala Ram. So through Bala Ram we can come to Krishna, to Mahasya Bala Ram. Because we have to get that strength by which we'll practice bhakti and be able to do the sadhana. So the spiritual master, <coughs> he is known as a manifestation of Bala Ram's mercy. Bala Ram is Adi Guru. Because through Balaram we come to Krishna. But all of us can access Nasya Balaram to the Guru, Sri Guru. When we take Diksha, then Balaram Masi comes in that form. Now for us who are in Chaitanya Lila, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, we're not in Chaitanya. We're in the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now if you see it like this, we want Nasya Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Nasya Mahaprabhu is the greatest commodity. By that, even if we don't attain, attain perfection, we can go back to Godhead. Of course, we will endeavor, we will not, we have to endeavor fully. But we reach 70%, still I have attachment, how will I go, then not go, okay, okay, forget it, it's okay. okay. Why he writes off, we may leave. So, how do we come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Through Nityananda. Nityananda's mercy comes in Sri Guru. For those in Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we see Sri Guru as Nityananda has come in a manifestation of the mercy of Nityananda. Therefore, you find a unique feature about Bodhi Vaishnavism. That the Gurus, they'll seek disciples and try their best to bring this different form. In the Vedic age, they were very strict. We we'll take the uh, once to take Diksha, we we'll check in, we also check. But the point is, they run after people. Even they want to block the number, and if it's a phone in disturbing me, I don't want to buy a phone in. And okay, then somehow they'll catch you and bring you. And the Guru is trying to catch people and bring. So Nityananda's mercy is so great, we can't imagine. Even if you don't want him, run after you and pull you to check him out. That is uh, Leela of Jagan Mother, we understand. So Guru Goranga. Goranitha is Guru and Goranga. Supreme Percent of Godhead and Sri Guru together. So we are recommended to take shelter of Goranitha. Bhakti Siddhanta Sushri Thakur, Shira Prabhupada's guru, he wrote in one of his writings, 
uh, you understand the nine levels, Adarshada, uh, Tata, Swadha, Sangha, Rajana, Kriya, Anatha, Nekriti. There are nine stages to attain Bhakti. That's a whole big topic. But uh, after we take Diksha, Diksha is the third stage. So after taking Diksha, we have to come to a stage known as Anatha, Nekriti. Our envy, anger, lust, greed has to disappear. How? By practicing bhakti. These things have to go. So, until we do not cross anartha and vritti, Bhakti Sandha Sufi Thakur said, take shot of Bodhi Thai, not Radha Krishna. We worship Radha Krishna, but you may have heard this, we worship him as Lakshmi Narayan. You heard this. It's a big topic. I don't want to know more topics. Yeah? But uh, Radha Krishna worship is a very high level. So, that is on Radha Krishna platform. But at the moment we are in Dasya Bhav, so we are worshipping Lakshmi Narayan Guru, Father is Radha Krishna. So, if we want to easily advance, we take shelter of Gauri Nari, they will help us to cross and remove all the dirt in the heart, the impurities which are blocking us from bhakti, Gauritra can remove them. And so until this stage comes, then we don't directly worship and come and uh, meditate. We meditate on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gauritra, Nityananda, Sri Guru, six Goswamis, and this one. Of course we'll observe all the festivals and everything. But uh, it's a very high level. So taking shelter of Gauritra is a good level. For shelter, for purification. This is the pranamantra for Gornikai. When we come for Gornikai, we are meant to chant this one. It comes, it's a second shloka in Chaitanya Charitamrita. One day, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodita, Gornikai, Krishna, Chaitanya Chandra, Tamonada. So we never saw before sun and moon coming together. Sun is so brilliant, it lights up everything. Moon also. This is saying sun and moon have arisen together. Goranga, Nityananda. Goranga is Golda. Nityananda is like a moon, very cooling, very uh, soft. So they have arisen together on the Golda horizon. Golda Uday. Golda means Beba, Bodhisattva. Why did they come? Chitra, Shandav, Tamor Nadav, to dissipate the darkness and give benediction upon all. Gornita has come for everyone. They are not seeing the background. They are not seeing anything. Everyone can access. Previously, the Vedic system was not like that. To chant mantras, to come, we, they had to be big qualification. It was not just according to the birth, we can take birth in a certain position and we had access. But now it's Kaliuga, there is no time. Quickly, purification, get out. Because the other day we discussed what will happen in Kaliuga if we stay. So now it's free for all. Just come and take it. So Gornitai now, they're giving it very easily accessible mercy. Simply we have to chant the Pranamantra, follow their instructions, hear about their teachings. And we can attain, we can attain the highest point. We can attain the highest point. So Gornitai, Srila Prabhupada installed Gornitai deities in so many temples. Can they not recognize these two deities? Who are they? Where are they? Nairobi. Nairobi. Yeah, they are yeah, from Nairobi. Yeah. 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 The people are right to be spoken. Shri Gornitai ki jai. Shri Panchatattva ki jai. Okay. I think you miss out. Okay. So we'll end here. And just last one is just saying that this is a preaching movement. Everyone has to preach. Here Nityananda is showing Haridas Thakur a vision of the future temple coming in Mayapur. He saw in a vision and told him a great temple will come from which preaching will expand. Then this movement will go all over the world. That is the temple being built now. So Hare Krishna.